Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me once again. Today, I am going to share my review of Call of Cthulhu Arkham from Chaosium, Inc. This is written by Mike Mason, Keith Herber, and Brett Kramer. This 272-page hardcover is available now carries an MSRP of $59.99. You will get the PDF absolutely free if you order from Chaosium Inc. or one of their partners. But if you only want to get the PDF, you can certainly do that over at Drive-Thru RPG for $29.99. All that said, let's swing on over to the other camera because here I've got Arkham for Call of Cthulhu. A few things to mention before we get stuck in. First of all, my friends over at Chaosium Inc. were kind enough to provide me with this review copy. But neither I nor anyone else associated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation for me to share this review with you. These days, it's important you know that. We're also not going to look at each and every page of this book, but I do want to give you a really good feel for what you're going to find inside Arkham. And then lastly, if you are a player and your keeper has picked this up or maybe they're considering picking this up, I would probably recommend Tune Out Now. Even though there isn't any adventures that are included in this source book, there are probably going to be some spoilers that you will see as I page through. And you don't want the surprises of the town ruined simply because you're watching this video. Now, of course, if your keeper is thinking about picking this up, by all means, let them know about this review so they can approach this and make an informed buying decision. All right, let's dive on in. So the first thing I want to do is share the credits. And I really appreciate the fact that Chaosium Inc. has shared credits from the previous editions of the Arkham source books that have come out for Call of Cthulhu because there was one that came out in 1990, another that came out in 2003. In fact, if I remember correctly, I think there was one between the two. I think it was called Arkham Complete that actually used a lot of the info from the 1990 book, but kind of trimmed some out. And then the 2003 version came out or edition came out and actually had more pages than the 1990 edition. So we get all of those credits here. And of course, we've got all of our artists too. It's important to note that the yeoman's work on Arkham was done by the late, great Keith Herber. And without Keith's fantastic work, Mike Mason and Brett Kramer would have had a near Herculean job of putting this book together. So we jump on in and we're going to get a bit of history about the town of Arkham. If you're not overly familiar with the town of Arkham, it is the home to Miskatonic University. Of course, back in the day, it was Miskatonic College. It was not a university. But at this point in time, which kind of the default year of this source book is 1922, Miskatonic is a university. So we'll get some info about King Philip's War, as well as the massacre of Native Americans, which already puts the town on some kind of unusual footing as far as restless spirits. Also, there's discussion of the Salem witch trials because Arkham is located 21 miles north, northeast of Boston, and Salem actually falls between Boston and Arkham. So we're going to start off with kind of a higher level look at the town, so we get an overview of various areas around it in the Miskatonic Valley. We get some info about like law and order, crime, things like that. We also get some optional new skills as well as experience packages and investigator backgrounds if you want your investigators to originate from Arkham. Now, I should point out there is information about Miskatonic University in the book. It doesn't get into a lot of depth as far as the university workings itself. 
So this is the first release in the Arkham Unveiled series of books for Call of Cthulhu. I believe Miskatonic University is going to be the next. Now, that's not to say that there isn't information about Miskatonic. There is. It's just not aimed at having your player characters involved heavily in the university, either as a professors or students or such. We do also have an optional reputation for the player characters in town and various ways to raise or lower that reputation, which for the most part is going to give you advantage dice or disadvantage dice. So we're going to start getting into the meat and potatoes of Arkham, which is essentially the different neighborhoods. So we've got the various different neighborhoods that are broken up in this book, and it gets into a lot of detail, and I really love the detail that is there. Now, before we get into the neighborhoods, we do have a discussion of the Arkham Coven. So there is a coven of witches that is active in Arkham. And of course, if you are familiar with dreams in the witch house, you know about the leader of the coven. Then we're going to get into the guide to Arkham. This is where we're going to start getting into the various different keyed locations throughout and the different neighborhoods. Now, the way the town is pretty much laid out north of the river is sort of the upper class. And then south of the river is more the working class, kind of the, the slums, the criminal elements tend to be active there. So we get a breakdown of the various different neighborhoods. And in each of the neighborhoods, we are going to have keyed locations. Now, one of the great selling points, in my opinion, of this source book is that Arkham comes across as a living, breathing town. So the entries that we get aren't only places that unusual supernatural goings-on are taking place or important, crucial NPCs reside or are associated with. No, we get entries for the YMCA, the YWCA, butchers and bakers, and people who are just regular citizens of Arkham. But then, of course, we also get a breakdown of other locations which have mythos or supernatural goings-on associated with them. Something I really, really like also is the fact that not only do we have the H.P. Lovecraft stories tied into this source book, we also have a lot of classic Call of Cthulhu tales which took place in Arkham or had serious ties to Arkham mentioned as well. Now, don't feel like you're missing out simply because you don't happen to own those possibly out-of-print adventures. I'm just saying I really love how that is included. We're also going to see little side boxes with some information about that period. Because as I mentioned, we are looking at kind of the default year for this book is 1922. But... One aspect of many of these keyed locations is what does the future hold? And many times it'll discuss what takes place in an H.P. Lovecraft story that maybe is set in 1927 or 1929. So you don't have to set your campaign, which is taking place in Arkham or is going to utilize Arkham quite a bit in 1922. Any time during the 1920s is fine. So with these key locations, we're going to have a variety of entries. And something else I thought was very cool is each entry isn't laid out exactly the same as we tend to see in city guides or region guides for role-playing games. So as an example here, we might get information about the business itself or the location itself. What is the importance of it? What are the player characters going to get out of it? How useful is this for them? We also will see if there are notable NPCs who are associated with that location. Now, there are over 80 
NPC stat blocks. But it's also important to keep in mind that some of these locations also have information about notable folk, gives us a name, gives us a little bit of information about them, which really stands out for the keeper to be able to role play those NPCs. But they're not real important. So we don't get stat blocks because we don't need stat blocks. So there are far more NPCs named in this book than you're going to see stat blocks. So as you can also see, we do have some locales who will give us a map. We even get a map of the witch house. So that I thought was pretty cool. And of course, we get stat blocks for important NPCs from Lovecraft stories. So as an example, we do get Professor Henry Armitage. So he is one of the statted NPCs. So other aspects of these locations that we'll see are going to be in these different sections. Not everyone, not every one of these entries has a section for this, but it'll, it's called strangeness. So it might discuss what sort of mythos activity or supernatural activity or just something bizarre, which might be tied to that locale is included. There's Dr. Henry Armitage. And there's his stat block. We get some new tomes. So there is loads and loads going on in this book. And I was just absolutely blown away by this. This is just so useful. Now, I should point out some keepers might find themselves feeling overwhelmed reading through all of this. But the reality is you don't need to have all this information at your fingertips. Right? So here's an example. We've got the funeral parlor, the graveyard. We've got Southside Bathhouse, Bayfriars Church, the University Spa, Miskatonic University Garage, Lewiston House Hotel. Do you need to know all this information? No, absolutely not. But it's very cool to have this in the book because, once again, it's all that kind of information that really goes a long way to bringing Arkham to life. Here's the witch house right there. We also have the criminal elements. There are two rival criminal gangs. One is Irish run. The other is Italian run. The Irish mob is pretty much the dominant group of gangsters. So we've got that. Something else I really love throughout is we have a sprinkling of various different advertisements that you might see in the Arkham Advertiser, which is the town newspaper. Here's the town dump. We do have some uh, locations on the outskirts of town, including the town dump. And the reality is this could be actually a very important location for player characters, as would be the dump operator. <laughs> so there we go. Here's another NBC from the Lovecraft stories. This is from the thing on the doorstep. And then we have some new information such as travel distances between Arkham and other locations nearby, Arkham names, Lovecraft chronology for the stories, and it's all gathered together in the appendices as well. So like the reputation information is earlier in the book, as an optional rule, and then we also get it in here. We have the weather generator. Everything is right there at your fingertips. We get some example NPCs, such as shop assistant, student, teacher, and so forth. We're going to wrap up with our biographies and our index and some advertising, as well as an Arkham-influenced character sheet for the 1920s. So that is a peek at the book. Now, there are a trio of items which are also included with this book I'm going to show you real quick. First of all, we have an example of the Arkham Advertiser, which I thought that was pretty wild. So it's only four pages in length, but it really does help immerse your players into the town. And this looks like a small town 
newspaper would have looked in this period. So we've got advertisements, we've got the cinema, we've got a comic strip, classified ads. I think this is really, really cool. I love that. And it's for Wednesday, September 13th, 1922. Then we have a poster-sized map of the street plan of Arkham. Now, this is for the players. And it will be helpful if they actually know how to use a map the old way that maps were presented because that's how this is presented with the graph broken down uh, of the different areas. So different hotels, cemeteries, churches, societies and clubs, all shown here. Now, you'll also notice this is not a keyed map. So this is the information there. And then we even get some advertisements down on the bottom. So that's cool. And then we have a map of Massachusetts in 1922. Here is Arkham. There is Boston. There's Salem in between. So right in this area here is the Miskatonic Valley. So this is for the players. And then for the keeper, we have a keyed street plan. So as you can see, we have numbers in the various locations. Now, of course, obviously enough, not every single building is keyed. So you can create your own Arkham, right? You can replace different locations with what you want, but there are plenty of locales for you to place various different residences or businesses or what have you that you want to create for Arkham. So here we've got Northside, Downtown, East Town, Merchant District, and so forth. And then on the back of this, we get the Arkham outskirts. As I had mentioned, we do have some key locales outside of Arkham, such as the Town Dump. Those are marked on this map as well. So we get these three items and the 270-page hardcover. So that's a peek at Call of Cthulhu Arkham. Let's swing on over to the other camera so I can share some final thoughts and give this a review score. Call of Cthulhu Arkham is fantastic. This is the sort of city book or region guide that most role-playing game companies aim to achieve. This is so, so well done. And it really ties in Everything from, not everything, but it ties in a lot of the history of Call of Cthulhu adventures into Arkham, as well as the H.P. Lovecraft stories. Love that. I really appreciate the fact that this is presented to give you a living, breathing town. So there are key locations here that serve absolutely no occult or mythos purpose. They really don't have important NPCs but you would expect to find them in a university town, and they are included. I really, really appreciate that. I really love the fact that we've got various different entries to these keyed locations, so we get the history. We might get what strangeness is going on, what the future might bring for that locale, because as I mentioned, the default year for this source book is 1922, but we also get information about various Lovecraft stories for different locations that take place later in the timeline, like 1927, as an example. So I really, really appreciate the entries that say, well, what does the future bring for this locale? And what the future brings isn't only tied in to H.P. Lovecraft stories. Really like that quite a lot. All in all, this is just an absolutely spectacular book. And huge, huge thanks to Keith Herber, years ago, putting in all that effort to create the framework that Mike Mason and Brett Kramer have built upon for this latest release of the Arkham Source book the first entry in the Arkham Unveiled series. 
So on a scale of zero to 10, I give Call of Cthulhu Arkham a 10 out of 10. If you are a keeper and you are running Call of Cthulhu and you plan to have anything taking place in Arkham, Massachusetts, this is a must have to bring that town to life. And of course, provide hours upon hours upon hours of adventuring within the environs of Arkham. It is that good. It is fantastic. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ring that bell. It'll not only let you know when I share videos such as this review, it'll also inform you when my live stream, The Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings right here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Central. Of course, when you're not watching videos on The Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit GamingGang.com for our latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more you are not going to find here on the channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at TheGamingGang.com. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and until I see you next time, I certainly hope all of you get to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang.